Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me for this week's Thursday's tip. This is Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. And today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make templates so that you can tell which punch is going to work best with the greeting that you're going to put on your card. Um, when I started stamping, I would stamp my images, go to punch it out only to find out it's too big, it's too small. It just doesn't look quite right. And I was wasting paper, kind of getting frustrated, that kind of thing. And so I decided to create a template that I could use to figure out which images are going to work best for which greeting that I plan to use. And all I've done, it's very, very simple. It takes just minutes to do, really. I don't do anything fancy with it. I've got basic white cardstock that I've cut two and three quarters by four and a quarter inches. And honestly, the reason I picked the size is I can get eight of these out of a single sheet of basic white paper, and I don't have any bits and pieces left over. Um, it gave me plenty of room to write my information down. And um, I don't know, for me, it just works. So two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Okay, so then what I did is I punched out each of my... Um, punches so that I had the template or the negative space left over. One tip that I want to share with you when you're punching them out is be sure that you are pushing your punch or the paper so that it's all the way to the end of the punch. That way um, you're getting enough space here. I didn't do that on a few when I started and what ends up happening is that you get, let me dig it out here, you get this type of a thing with a very thin um, space and after you've used it a few times it gets weak and eventually starts to tear. So if you go a little bit bigger you've got a more solid uh, space between the end of the paper and your punch and that results in just a sturdier um, template for you to work with. So again I've just taken all of the punches that I own that I would use for greetings I've made the punch, I've written down the size, the item number in my catalog, and the price. Um, I don't put page numbers down because those will change over time, uh, pretty much with each new catalog. Um, but any, any punch that I think I can use for a greeting, I'm going to include in here. And um, I also keep blanks at the end so that when I do get new punches that are good for greetings, I can write on here the information, punch it out right away, and I'm good to go. Now, how I use this is I take my greetings that I've got, and there's some stamp sets, you know, the itty bitty greetings. You pretty much know you're gonna be able to use the classic label punch, and it's gonna fit all of these greetings very nicely. You don't really have to think too hard about it. Hey friend is pushing it, best wishes that's pushing it. But the majority of these greetings um, will fit right in this. So that one's pretty easy to figure out. You don't have to think a whole lot. But what if you want to go with a circle instead of that, um, the, the classic label punch? Maybe you want to put it in a circle or maybe you want to put it in an oval, but you're not sure what it's going to look like. So you can whip out your template and say, oh, with gratitude fits very nicely. Happy Mother's Day, that fits in there well too. And then you know right away you can also use double layers and get your background paper so that you end up, you know, being able to stack it up that way. I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of this little sample that I made because I keep bringing it out in different videos that I make. Um, but just a quick, easy way. Now one word of caution is if you're going to line them up to your stamps like this on the cover, you just want to make sure that the stamps themselves are at 100%, these images on here. Um, not all of our stamps come at 100%. Uh, it depends on how large it is. So for example, this one is smaller than what the actual images are. And so you can't be assured that you're getting a good fit here because it is actually going to be bigger when you stamp it. So just be a, a word of caution on that. And then, um, you know, sometimes I don't know, is the greeting going to fit in here? Does it look good with a square piece? Would it look better if I used one of my more rounded punches, you know, a little more elegant? 
I can again easily, easily grab my stamp set and start, you know, seeing what looks on that. Happy anniversary, that fits in there, but maybe it's a little too big and I wanna go with something slightly smaller. Um, maybe I wanna put it in a heart, but I'm not sure if it's gonna fit. So I can quickly tell how greetings are gonna look in the punch shape that I've got. And I'm not wasting my time punching and stamping and finding out, oh, I don't like how that looks. So just a really quick, easy tool. Again, two and three quarters by four and a quarter. I simply punch it out, making sure that I've pushed the paper to the end of my punch um, so that I've got good solid edges here. I just write the name of the punch, the item number, and the price of the punches. And then I am good to go. The other thing that it helps with is especially like with our circles, if it fits in the one and a half, well, I think the two and two and, I think it's two and a quarter inch. If I know it fits in the two inch circle, then I can punch out of my coordinating color cardstock that two and a quarter and have an instant layer piece going for me as well. Um, I also like using this tool for some of the irregular shaped stamps that we have. Um, one of my go-to sets is peaceful moments for greetings and there's a lot of different shapes that these greetings come in and so I can start going oh hey this looks really good and fits very nicely in the everyday label punch but it's not going to work in this it just pushes it a little bit too tight for the teller tag punch um, or maybe I want to see does that fit into a circle so it, it helps me with the irregular shaped stamped greetings too. I have not done this with my dies, although I am going to be doing that in my spare time, whenever that's gonna come to be. The one die that I have taken the time to do that with is the message die. And you may wonder why on earth I would do that when that comes with all of these wonderful stamped images that perfectly line, I do this every time, perfectly line up with all of the greetings in here simply by making sure you've got your stars and hearts lined up. Um, I'm not gonna be able to do it just because my case is slightly warped, but um, I've got all these greetings that fit in there. And you're right, they do fit and I shouldn't have to worry about that. But let's say for example, Peaceful Moments here has got this longer greeting and I really wanna have it popped out on a layer, but my punch is too short for that. And I know there's ways that you can slide the ends in, punch one end and then slide the other end in and punch that. Um, I'm a little lazy for that sometimes, so I just wanna do a quicker way of getting it. So I can take this and slide it over the stamps until I figure out which one fits my greeting. That one's a little too small. That one looks really nice. Um, again, I can then cut out just a piece of paper that's slightly bigger than the exact shape here that I want. I'm not gonna cut all of these out, but just for the image that I want, I can stamp it and then line my die up over it and use my um, cut and emboss machine and get just the single greeting out on the die. So I found it to be very handy with this one because I do like some of the shapes that come through on this. Um, and so I have found that works for me on this one. So I hope that this has been helpful for you and that you're able to put one of these together. Literally, um, it probably will take you 10, 15 minutes if you do it quickly. Um, you know, don't worry about fussy labels or anything like that. This is just a tool for you to use. Two and three quarters by four and a quarter. I just punched it in the corner and um, used one of these split rings to put them on so that I can easily flip them through. Um, I'm also able to easily remove them if I eliminate a punch from my set because it's retired or something like that. And so have fun. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video tonight. If you like what you're seeing, please be sure to like, my, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel down below and uh, give me a thumbs up. If you've got friends that you think would like to hear what you're hearing, get some of these tips and watch some of my card demonstrations on my Make It Monday videos as well. Please be sure to share my link with them and I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday for that tip. Have a good week everyone. Bye-bye.